All right, everybody, so this is our, um, I guess it's week seven now of the course, and we are getting into section 23.7, which is the last of this unit, uh, which is um, RC circuits. So an RC circuit is a circuit that contains a resistor for the R and a capacitor for the C. So we've talked about resistors and capacitors uh, individually, uh, just resistor circuits or just capacitor circuits. Um, we've looked at them in series and parallel. So we have a, a pretty decent idea of how things behave, um, but uh, RC circuits um, are uh, sort of interesting because they, they serve different functions. So uh, in an RC circuit, the, the current varies with time. So what that means is um, in a direct current circuit, like a battery circuit, like we've been studying, uh, if we had resistors, uh, the current just, um, you know, flowed through uh, the circuit and it was a consistent amount of current. Um, in capacitors, and we didn't really talk about this in capacitor circuits, but uh, in capacitor circuits, um, it takes time for the charges to accumulate on the capacitor. So they don't like instantaneously uh, charge up, it actually takes some time. So, um, so in these circuits where you have a resistor and a capacitor, uh, current varies with time, so it changes. Uh, the values of the resistance of the capacitance in an RC circuit uh, determine the amount of time it takes. Um, and we'll talk about that. So, and again, we can have capacitors charging where it's gaining uh, charge on the plates or discharging where it's losing charge and releasing the charge, okay? So uh, first off, I wanted to talk about a little bit about RC circuits and where they're used. So um, they're often found in circuits that you need some sort of timing device. So uh, an everyday one that you're familiar with, if you have um, sort of the windshield wipers on your car, um, they have, uh, RC circuits in them. So like the high high speed, uh, when you turn it all the way up to high and the windshield wiper uh, alternates back faster or the slower one, or the one that's probably the most interesting one is the uh, intermittent. So like you have that uh, adjustable dial that changes the resistance uh, in that circuit. And um, as the resistance increases the amount of time it takes um, to charge and discharge, which is the wiping part, um, that is the, that is increased. So um, other things like pacemakers, camera flashes, um, they are again with RC circuits. Uh, so again, resistor capacitor circuits, um, not remote control, which is what I think of when I think of like remote control cars. That's not what it is. All right. So um, Kirchhoff's rules, which we studied, um, so the current rule and the loop rule, uh, they're used and that's what we, how we analyze these types of circuits. So just giving you a picture um, of a circuit, we're going to talk about uh, discharging a capacitor first. So in discharging your capacitor, you are taking the charge off the capacitor and allowing that charge to go through uh, the circuit and power some type of device. So it says uh, the figure shown as an RC circuit below uh, consists of a charged capacitor. So this capacitor is fully charged, uh, it has charge Q on each plate, um, and it has a voltage um, of V across those plates. So that's um, what we defined as capacitance. So if I kind of just write out that original equation for capacitance, let me get a pen that works. There we go. So it was like C uh, is equal to, let me try to use the mouse, that would be better, uh, is equal to uh, Q over V. So um, the capacitance is C equals Q over V. If we wanted V, or the potential difference, triangle V, um, triangle V, the potential difference is equal to Q over C. So Q over C. And uh, it says Q naught because it's like the original charge. So when it first starts out, it has the, the maximum amount of charge here, it's fully charged. Um, and what will happen is um, at some time, we're gonna just say at time equals zero, we start the clock, um, we're gonna close the switch. So we're gonna make this so that it, it gets closed and it just conducts. And then because of that, the, tr the current in the circuit will start to flow. So as uh, current flows, just like we had in other circuits, we got our current moving. Uh, current is just the movement of charges. So charges, Q uh, over T, that's what current is. Uh, these charges are gonna move through the wire and through the resistor, it's gonna power our resistor. So that powers the light bulb, it powers whatever. Um, and that current is gonna change because um, it's not a consistent flow. It's not a battery, it has a fixed amount of charge. And as this gets less and less charge, there's gonna be less and less current moving. So that's, that's the way it works. So that's why the charge uh, is different and the current is different. So, so again, um, the figure shows the circuit immediately after the switch closes uh, down here. So it's now it's closed. Uh, the capacitor voltage is still V 
uh, because the capacitor hasn't yet had time to lose any charge. So it hasn't like this voltage here across these two plates, uh, that voltage or triangle V or V um, is still the same. So the, the voltage of the capacitor initial. So when you first close it, it's the same voltage. Um, and it hasn't any time to lose any charge, but now there's a current IO. So there's this current IO, uh, which is the original current that leaves the uh, capacitor, the charge is moving, and it flows through that, all right? Um, and then as time goes by, and I sort of described this, um, you could use, oh, sorry, let me go back. So we can use the idea with capacitance. So I said C equals Q over V, uh, just solve for V. So if we know the um, the charge, or the capacitance of the and the voltage, we can figure out how much charge gets there. Or you know, we can do lots of different um, manipulation of this equation. But we're solving for the voltage here. Um, then, um, as that uh, current starts to move, um, if we wanted the initial current, it would be the voltage over the resistance. This is just Ohm's law again. So, uh, verb equals IR uh, is our standard kind of way that we solve things for Ohm's law. Um, and it's just solved for I. So if we have the original voltage and the original current, uh, resistance is going to be a constant. It's not going to change um, in this, this basic circuit that we have. We can have variable resistors. Uh, that's what your intermittent uh, setting on your windshield wipers is. It's like you vary the resistance. So, uh, so immediately after the switch closes, again, that current is flowing from uh, the positive around the circuit through the resistor powering it and then getting to this side as that happens um, longer and longer in time um, the capacitor charge will decrease uh, and the potential if if q decreases like remember capacitance is a constant so it's like q over delta v um, the capacitance is you know we we studied is dependent upon the construction of the like what it's made out of the the size of the plates um, and the uh, gap you know, the distance between them that we had this equation, this E naught uh, A over D equation. And then we had maybe our, uh, I think it was a little K here. That was our dielectric constant if we had a dielectric in there. But basically this, these are both constants and it's just based on the area and the separation of the plates. So that's not changing. We're not changing the capacitor at all. So if Q decreases uh, in order to adjust and keep the capacitance the same, the voltage has to decrease. So the voltage across these plates decreases, that makes sense because there's less of a charge separation. So there's less of this potential energy that's trying to make the charges move, which is what powers the circuit. Um, so because there's a lower voltage with the same resistance, um, this current has to drop. So as time goes by, there's less and less current. That's, that's the way it works. Um, and what will happen is it will, this capacitor will continually discharge. So this, this bullet point, um, the current and the voltage will continually drop until eventually this voltage goes to zero um, because there's no more charge there. And if there's no more charge, there's no more current moving. So um, the way that this discharges, it's not a linear discharge. Um, it doesn't go like in a straight line, it's a curve. And it follows um, a function that you might be familiar with, with it, which is um, e. So if you've ever done any functions with the uh, base E, um, you might remember this from uh, a different math class, but it's okay. Um, you, you will look at that function. So, and these look like the same um, with the discharge because um, the current discharges and the voltage discharges based on uh, V equals IR or I equals V over R. So if we did it this way, or this way, it doesn't really matter. Um, the these two um, ideas are as a constant. So, like I, how I varies is how delta v varies. So that makes sense. Um, so uh, this is called exponential decay. So that's the e um, to the power. So these equations look complicated. They're not all that tricky. It's just making sure you plug things in the right amount of in your calculator. So. Um, so just to kind of read through what these are, these two equations, this is for the current. So this is the current as a function of time. So as time goes by, this is what the current uh, ends up being. And then this is the voltage as a function of time. So as time goes by, this is what the voltage changes to. The IO and VO for the capacitor, those uh, original uh, values, those are, those are the starting values. So it's the current and voltage when it began. Um, this negative T, T is the time that you're letting it discharge. Um, so 
Uh, that's just how much time goes by. So if it's one second, two seconds, it's probably smaller than that because capacitors discharge quickly. Um, and then this RC, RC, that is the resistance of the uh, in the circuit, the resistor value, and then C is the capacitor value. So that's it. That's that's all it is. Uh, and you just raise it to this negative T over RC um, value. You're going to multiply it by the original value that you, we calculate using Ohm's law or given in the problem. And then you can solve for I or you can solve for uh, the voltage at a certain time. So um, another way that it's written, and this is probably the more compact way, um, is uh, based in in terms of what's called the time constant. So that's the, the amount of time it takes um, for the the capacitor or, or the RC, the capacitor to discharge. And it's based upon um, the resistance and the capacitance of the elements in the circuit. So um, R times C will get you the time constant. So uh, it's the same equation. If you look back at these equations, the only thing that's changed instead of having uh, this Greek letter tau, which is this this look like backwards looking J thing. It's like a T with a hook on it. Um, that's RC. So it's it's the same exact equation we just had over here. Um, it's just they stuck in uh, tau instead. So it's like a little more compact, um, but it's fine. It's not it's not that big a deal. So um, so you just use the equation the same way. It's just got a, you calculate RC R times C in the beginning to get the time constant. Um, so this graph is a good at showing you um, how the voltage changes based on an exponential decay. So like you start out with whatever your voltage is here. Um, and as time goes by, uh, the voltage drops. So if you've gone through one, um, one time constant, so if you did that, uh, it would be like E uh, to the negative uh, lowercase t, which is the time you're measuring, the time you're measuring the, the voltage at. So you start with your original voltage of the capacitor. So uh, there's a C there too. So the original voltage, um, and we're trying to measure the, the capacitance, the voltage of the capacitor at a certain time. And then you divide it by that time constant. Since these two numbers, if we've gone one complete time constant, T is equal to tau, and it would just be E to the negative one. So E to the negative one is 0.37. So it's like 37% of the original voltage. So, um, so after one time constant, it's dropped to 37%. If you do a second one, so E to the negative two, so it's like two T, so it would be negative two. Uh, tau over tau, so the tau's drop out, it'd be e to the negative two, you'd be at 13%. Um, I think at three, you're around 5%. And if you get the four, um, and that's that's kind of the end of it, at four time constants, you're basically 99% discharged. So your capacitor uh, essentially has no charge left on it, and um, there is no voltage across um, that capacitor, and there's no, no more current flowing through um, the circuit. So that is that is the way it works. Um, so again, this is just that's the common way that you think about it. Uh, and like I like this time constant idea. It's it's pretty simple. So you just multiply the resistance of the in the circuit times the capacitance. Um, if you look at either of these, they're directly related to the the time constant. So if you have a bigger resistance, you're going to get a bigger time constant. Uh, also, if you have a bigger capacitance you're gonna get a bigger time constant. So they're directly related, both those ideas. So uh, it makes sense because a larger resistance means that um, you're gonna have a larger kind of opposition to the flow of charges. So you're gonna have an increase in the time that it takes to get to nothing. So as this value for R gets bigger, so does T. So it's like got a bigger resistance, less current's gonna flow. Um, the idea with the capacitor, uh, the capacitor is Q over V. So if uh, the capacitance is large, that means that the charge is large. If you have more charges, it's gonna take longer to discharge all those charges. So um, either of those values, if C gets bigger or if R gets bigger, so does the time constant. So let's try a couple um, conceptual questions here. So you'll answer a couple questions here in the video. And it says, which capacitor discharges more quickly um, after the switch is closed? So um, we have capacitor A, uh, which is this one, capacitor B, which is this one, uh, they discharge at the same rate, or we can't say without knowing. I'm not going to give you a question that you can't say. So um, it's just what you need to figure out is you're trying to figure out quickly or how much time goes by. So we're going to use the time constant idea. So it's just R times C. Um, or if you want seconds for your answer, you would need to convert um, micro to times 10 to the negative six. But um, just to get a comparison between these two, they're in the same unit. So two times six is 12. So this first one has a time constant of 12. 
And if you look at B, it'd be a constant of five times three. So that's 15. So you gotta figure out, okay, what does that mean? And which one would discharge more quickly? So this is where I'll, I'll let you uh, think they are not gonna be the same. If they had the same value for tau, they would, they would discharge at the same rate. So it's either A or B, let me give you a second to answer. And um, what you need to think about is, okay, this tells you how much time it takes to discharge. So if it's got a larger value here, it's taking more time. Um, so the one with the smaller time constant is gonna be the one that discharges more quickly. So the correct answer is A. So that's, that's what we would want. So if we wanted to discharge more quickly, uh, we would have a lower value for that. All right. Um, the next one has uh, basically the same kind of setup, the, uh, the capacitance or the capacitor and the resistor in series. And um, we're going to charge it up. I'm sorry, we're going to discharge. Um, yeah. And um, we're going to see, you know, which capacitor retains the highest charge voltage. So um, anyway, same idea. You're looking at tau. So it's R times C. So one times two is two. Uh, this is going to be about one. It's a little less than one. Uh, when you multiply it, one times three is three. And uh, 0.4 times three, uh, that's like one and a half or... Yeah, so if we're ranking them, C has the biggest time constant. Um, so it says, uh, again, just to clarify, which capacitance retains the highest charge voltage after one second has passed? So after one second, um, the one with the highest time constant here uh, is gonna have the most charge left because it's it's storing more. So that's gonna be C. All right, um, another setup, uh, it's saying if the following circuit, um, the switch is initially closed, and um, the bulb grows bright. So like uh, we have our battery uh, and it's hooked up here uh, and uh, it's initially closed. So it just like power the, the light bulb, the bulb, it would just go through this way. So the current would just go, it wouldn't go across the capacitor. It wouldn't use the capacitor because that would not be necessary. So um, it says after um, we open the switch, um, what would happen? So uh, it's starting out with some brightness here. So that's based on power and current and voltage. So um, then uh, it's going to start, but what's going to happen as time goes by, um, the current's going to stop because it's going to like, it's going to charge the capacitor, but the capacitor is going to eventually gain the maximum amount of charge it can. At that point, the current will stop flowing. So um, so it's going to start out with the same brightness and it's going to gradually dim. So that, that answer is B. All right. All right, so um, so let's go ahead and just try to do a problem to make sure we can. So it says find the current in an RC circuit. So the switch is uh, in the circuit has been in position for a long time, so the capacitor is fully charged. So this battery uh, is set up and it's charging this capacitor. So the capacitor is getting, it's got charge here. So if this is the positive side and this is the negative side, the positives collect on this. So you got your positive charges here and you got your negative charges here. Nothing's happening to the resistor. Why? Because there's this gap. It's not connected. So uh, the circuit is just powering this capacitor. It's, it's charging the capacitor as time goes by. And then, then we're going to flip this switch. So we're going to take it from A and move it to B. Um, so it's now going to be here and the battery is not going to be connected anymore. And it's just this circuit. So we have this, this set up here. So this is our RC circuit that we've been studying. And it says, what is the current in the circuit immediately after the switch is closed? And what is the current in the circuit uh, 25 microseconds later? So, um, so we need to figure out, okay, um, how much current would be going here and that's gonna be flowing immediately and then it's gonna discharge. So, um, so we're gonna work through this problem. Um, so if we think about the capacitor here, what's the voltage on this capacitor? Uh, it's gonna be the same as the voltage of the battery. So after a long time, it, it has nine volts. Um, so, so in this circuit, we have nine volts hooked up to a 10 ohm resistor. If we use Ohm's law, uh, it would be I naught is equal to the voltage of the capacitor original uh, divided by the resistance. Oops, I'm jumping ahead and putting numbers in. Uh, the, the, the voltage of the capacitor original that it starts out with divided by the resistance in our circuit. So if we do that, it'd be nine over 10. Uh, which is 0.9. So IO uh, is 0.9. So 0.9 amps, that would be the original current that would flow as soon as we uh, start this switch. Okay. Um, then we're going to say, okay, 25 seconds or 25 microseconds later, uh, we're going to get 
what is the current then? So if I look at the current later on, um, as this discharges, what happens to the current? We said as it discharges, the current gets less. So we would expect a number smaller than 0.9. Um, we need to figure out how much smaller it is. Uh, so that's that's our goal of this problem. So, um, so one of the things we probably want to do early on after we've already figured out the original current, which we just did, we need to figure out the time constant. So the time constant would just be uh, the resistance R times the capacitance C. Again, uh, this one converted um, and made a 10 to the negative six. That would be 1.0 uh, times 10 to the negative fifth. So it's a really short time constant. So it starts decaying uh, very rapidly. Um, so four of those, and it would basically be at nothing. Um, and then 10 to the negative fifth, one times the negative fifth, that would be like um, if we had 10 to the negative six, which is what this is, uh, that'd be 10 microseconds is essentially what that is. So uh, we'll use that later on. So that's that's important. Okay. Uh, we've already talked about the Ohm's law idea. So figuring out how much current would initially flow. Um, so when we moved it to B, we flipped the switch uh, and closed this part of the circuit, the capacitor would start discharging through the resistor. And this is the original amount of current that would start to flow. Um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out the current later on. So this is the formula for it. So it's I equals I naught E to the negative, the time that you're going to let the current discharge or let the, the capacitor discharge divided by the time constant that we just found. Now, if you notice, these are in the same units, so microseconds and microseconds. So we could convert. It's going to be the same conversion. It's just a ratio here, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is basically like 0.9, which was our original IO. Uh, e, oops, let me fix the nine there because that looks weird. Looks like a G. So, um, so 0.9, um, and then it'd be E to the negative 2.5. So it's 2.5 because 25 divided by 10. So E to the negative 2.5, and that gets you this number. So uh, it goes from 0.90 to 0 0.074. So the current has dropped, um, you know, like a lot. <laughs> So from 0.9 all the way down to 0 0.074. So um, like 90% it's dropped. Um, so so that's the that's the value for that. If you wanted to check to kind of think through it, it makes sense uh, because we said like after four it's at zero. After three uh, it's it's about five left. Um, so it's in between the two and the three. So it's it's like two and a half time constants, which we talked about. So we would expect it not to have much current left. All right, so that makes sense. Um, so we talked about discharging a capacitor. Uh, charging a capacitor is very similar. It's just sort of the opposite process. So um, uh, in a circuit that charges a capacitor, once the switch is closed, the potential difference in the battery causes a circuit, the current in the circuit, and the capacitor begins to charge. So uh, right now nothing's happening because uh, the switch is open. If we close the switch and it you know, makes a, a complete circuit, then our current would start to flow and charge this capacitor. So again, uh, this is our positive side of the battery. Um, this symbol E, it's really epsilon. It just means electromotive force. It's not something that I usually use when I describe um, the battery, but it's it's just the voltage of the battery. So this electromotive force is the, the voltage of the battery. It's just a different symbol for it. I don't know why they do that to confuse people. I think it's to distinguish between the electromotive force of the battery uh, versus the voltage uh, across the, or potential difference across the capacitor. So um, so what happens is this current is gonna start uh, pushing charges onto the plates of the capacitor and over time uh, it would charge up. So that's, that's what's happening. Um, eventually as it charges more and more charge, the, the current is less and less because it can only take so much current. So, um, so the current decreases and it drops at a rate um, and, and what happens is it continually charges it until this becomes, this, this capacitance, um, the voltage across the capacitance, our capacitor, is the voltage across the battery. That's, that's all it does, okay? Because it, it maxes out. So the equations here, the current equation is exactly the same. It didn't change at all um, because the current is going to drop as time progresses. So as the capacitor gets more and more charged, there is less um, current that's going to flow through the circuit. Um, the voltage, though, is different because the voltage is, is gaining voltage as time goes by and up to some maximum amount, which is the voltage of the battery. Um, this, is, this is slightly different than the previous equation. 
uh, when we had the capacitor already charged. So we had the other equation that we had, which is similar. The I, the I equation is exactly the same. The current doesn't change, it's the same exact thing. But because um, you're gaining voltage here um, versus losing voltage, it looks like this. So this was the voltage the capacitance, this was the uh, discharging one, this is the charging stuff. Um, it was uh, V or the, the voltage of the capacitor original times um, E to the negative, uh, I'll just write it in the shorthand, so the time divided by the time constant. So this was our equation. So you can see there's a one minus the idea here. So it's the same uh, ideas, it's just this makes it, when it's one minus, it's gonna be an exponential gain instead of an exponential decay. Um, and you multiply that by the original uh, potential difference or the maximum potential difference, which is the voltage of the battery. All right, so, um, Let's, let's look at this a uh, couple questions. It says the capacitor is initially unchanged um, or uncharged is what it should say. Uh, immediately after the switch closes, the capacitor's voltage is. So um, immediately when I flip the switch, does this immediately go to anything? And you have to give it time. Like it has, it takes time for the charges to get onto the plates. So originally it's at zero and it's like, if you immediately switch the, it doesn't immediately charge up. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, so it's going to be zero. Um, after a while, though, uh, it charges up. So these are several graphs. Um, the red curve here shows the capacitor uh, charges after um, after like a long time. Um, it shows you how it behaves. So this red um, curve that I'm tracing out is based on the setup that it has right now. Okay. So it says, um, which curve shows the capacitor charging if the value of the resistor is reduced? So if we're reducing... R, what's going to happen to our curve. So um, again, uh, this is I, it's the same idea as, or Q is the same as the idea as I. So I behaves like Q. So I is just Q over T. Um, so as you get more and more uh, time, uh, you're going to get more and more current, which is going to produce more and more charge. Um, so, so if you think about this, uh, and we're reducing R. So R has an impact on the time constant. So it's RC. If we're keeping the capacitor the same and we're reducing R, what's going to happen to the time constant? So let me answer, let you answer that question again, review that idea. So what happens to the time constant if the resistance is reduced? And the answer is the time constant decreases. So if the time constant decreases, it's going to be easier to charge because there's less resistance. So it, it should happen more quickly. So we're looking at a graph that's going to um, reach the amount of charge more quickly. Again, uh, there is a maximum amount of charge, so it's going to flatten out and reach the same point of here. This is like our maximum. Um, so this is like that red value that it gets to. So it can't be A because it's not going to charge more. Uh, it's not going to charge less. So the only other one that makes sense is B. And if you look at B, it charges to that value much more quickly. So it gets to this at, at this time here for the red one, it gets to the maximum charge. For the B here, this blue one, it gets to that maximum amount, you know, around there. So if we have the time has gotten smaller, which is what should happen with a reduced time constant. So that makes sense. All right. So again, B is the answer. Smaller R equals a smaller time constant. Same ultimate amount of charge uh, at the capacitor. And uh, since you have the same amount of charge, uh, it just has to happen in a shorter time. So B is the only graph that does that. All right. So this is going to be the last thing we're going to talk through is a problem. Um, this time we're going to uh, charge a capacitor instead of discharging it. I drew a picture here. So uh, the basic setup is you have your battery, uh, which has the voltage. So I, I could write this as the voltage of the battery. That's the same um, as the uh, EMF. So again, if you see in this book, in the book, this symbol, uh, Greek letter epsilon, that's the same thing. So we got our battery, positive side, negative side. Um, and it's gonna, when we close the switch, and I didn't have a switch in here, but let's say we had a switch. So I just added a switch that's closed. The current's gonna flow through and it's gonna charge this capacitor. So the capacitor is gonna start to gain charge um, on both sides of the plates and it charges up. So it says a uh, 500 ohm resistor uh, and an uncharged 1.5 microfarad capacitor are, are hooked up to a 6.16 volt uh, EMF or battery. Um, they're connected in series, but we don't know what is the initial current that uh, is flowing through uh, the uh, circuit. 
then uh, B, what is the time constant? C wants to know what is the current after one time constant? And then D wants to know what is the voltage on the capacitor after one time constant? So this is a charging situation. So uh, if I look at this first part, um, we're looking for the current, we know the voltage and we know the resistance. So it's just Ohm's law. So V equals I not R, we're trying to find I naught. Um, so uh, V equals I R, V would be the voltage of the battery, which is 6.16. R is 500, we're looking for the initial current. So this is the initial current. So the current that starts to move uh, through this um, setup is 0.01232, all right? Um, the time constant's pretty straightforward too. So like to get the time constant, you just multiply the resistance times the capacitance. So it'd be 500 times 1.5 times 10 to the sixth, which is uh, that value there, which is 0. 0.000. Uh, 0 0.075 or 7.5 times 10 to the negative fourth second. So it's a it's a quick time constant. So it's charging, um, and it, and it, it basically follows the same rule. So like after one time constant, um, it would be um, like it decreased to 37%. It would increase um, by the other amount. So uh, if we do that uh, idea um, as the current you know, as current, the current at a time is equal to the original current times e to the negative time divided by the time constant or RC. So we have our original current, we have our time constant. It says one time constant. So this just turns into negative one here. And if you do that, the, the current has dropped to 0 0.0453 amps. So that is the um, current that is flowing after that amount of time. So after 0.00075, um, the current has reduced from this value down to this value. Um, the voltage, it should be uh, increasing, right? Because there was no voltage in the beginning, but as we get more charge separated, you get a bigger voltage. Um, so that's that's what's happening here. So um, we're going to use this um, charging equation. So again, E0 is the battery. So that's going to be the 6.16, a 1 minus, and then this is the same idea that you put over here. It's just 1 minus the number. So e to the negative one time constant, so this would just be e to the negative one. Um, and if you do that, uh, 6.6 .6 times one, um, one minus e to the negative one uh, gets you uh, 3.89 volts. So it's not all the way up to 6.16 yet, it's at 3.89, it's gaining that voltage. Um, after four of them, it's, it's charged all the way. So um, that's, that's the concept, all right? So I'm gonna stop there, that's a half hour or so. So um, good luck, hopefully that helps and that's our lesson on RC circuits.